I really want a raging Brachydios. So I made one. Hello, my fellow writers, and welcome to the very first Monsty build. And of course, how could it be anyone other than Bracky Daddy? Though that said, any power monsty, any fire monsty, and especially any power fire monsty, this is the absolute premium maximum damage ridiculousness that will have you absolutely decimating all who stand before you. You will be hitting for absurd numbers. You will be burning and blast blighting and just generally melting through all opposition while still having a, well, healthy amount of utility and defense. And you might be asking, but how is it in PvP? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, let's, uh, let's ask this guy. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. So, what's actually going on here? Well, we are using a firepower monster as a template, in this case, Brachydios, though the supreme monster to use is on his Teostra as the highest offensively powerful power fire monster, but still, anything that likes red, both in fire and attack type, is going to have a fantastic time here. Seriously, you're going to be regularly getting savage fireballs hitting for upwards of 2k. <laughs> Now, at this point, I do want to say that obviously when showing a monsty build, the level of the monsty is a really big deal. A level 100 monsty with essentially no genes is going to absolutely annihilate number-wise a level 10 monsty with perfect genes, of course. So, yeah, this guy is only level 56. PvP scaled to 50, which is why relatively he just one-shots, as you saw, but... I, uh, from scaling his stats to what it would be at around level 80, for example, I mean, you're going to be hitting for nearly 4,000 damage with the Savage Fireball. It's just kind of crazy. And it's not just because it's a Kazu who doesn't like fire. Ironically, this is hit much harder on not fire weak monsties. I'm not really sure why, but the point is, and I'm not sure if I've hammered this home enough yet, it really, really hurts. So, what actual gene setup are we going for here? Well, it's a lovely arrow formation. An arrow was in points this at anything that you want to remove from this earth. Your enemy here. And uh, in this arrow formation, we have, uh, well, let's go through it one by one, shall we? Beginning with Savage Fireball. This is the bread and butter attack of this setup. It comes from Rathalos, and it is massive fire damage with a really good chance to get that burn. That is fantastic, because not only does the burn do lots of damage, it works beautifully with a gene we'll be getting to in a moment. You want your enemies burnt. Burnt and crispy, like toast you've forgotten about. Anyway, moving on next to continue this line of power fire double bingo is Supernova! Yeah, Teostra's big signature attack for massive fire damage to everyone, and again, absolutely fantastic chance to burn them. Now, I will say on average, despite this saying massive and savage fireball saying uh, just heavy, the fireball tends to out damage the supernova, which probably is explained by savage fireball having a better motion value uh, than a supernova, but then supernova described as massive and savage as heavy. Maybe it's just massive relative to an AoE, which still has to be less because it's hitting everyone and you're paying a tax for that, but you know, for an AoE it's massive, but you know, it would just be medium as a single. Perhaps there's some sort of wordery going on there, but the point is, Savage Fireball, very, very good. But the Supernova is still ridiculous, and if you can get it off, which you can do fairly frequently, well, you're going to be absolutely shredding through groups of enemies. It really is 
honestly one of the best single moves in the game. At the top right then is uh, just really this is your kind of free slot. This can be any power fire gene you like. I've gone for Bombardier Excel because well it makes the actual blast uh, blight explosions that you're going to be getting with this do upwards of 1500 damage which is really really tasty and in a PvE fight that's obviously going to last quite a few turns that's going to add up. It's not as useful in PvP and this is one of the genes that I would suddenly modify if I was going to make him specifically for PvP but you could really replace this with Heroics, I suppose, is the other main one, but there's not that many power fire choices, and you might as well put something here instead of a rainbow gene. Then we have Fire Boost XL. Of course, you always want your relevant element boost on a monster. It just gives it a huge plus 40 to the appropriate stat, and that is a big bump in output. Then we have Flame Burst. This is from Azure Rathalos, and... Honestly, this is probably the highest move here. All of the others have me like. But this one you could probably replace with any fire power move. I like it because it's another way to hit everyone, another way to do a load of damage, another way to get burn. It kind of ticks all the boxes that this gene setup wants to be ticking. But you could go for Anginas Bite, for example, if you want something a little bit more single target focus. The damage is good, but uh, it's just a nice little filler move to keep the fire power bingo going. And, and when he chooses to use it by himself, well, that's a really nice little bonus. Then we go on to the rest of it with self-heal. This is just fantastically useful, essentially in every situation. You want your monster to just be slowly powering back up health through the fight. It's more useful in PvP than it is in PvE, where you're just going to be healing him anyway, but it is really solid to be there. Now this, again, is a kind of flexible gene slot. It could be self-heal, it could be soul kinship, it could be divine protection, it could even be just a all element defense up, something along those lines. It's your utility defensive protective slot. I've just gone for self heal. Then we have uh, the fiery aura, Bracky's own slime gene to add blast blight to his attacks. You want your enemy to be blighted for this to really pop off because again, the gene will get to soon. And having a blast blight just slowly ticking along is really useful. Again, more useful in a uh, PvE environment against a random monster that you're chewing through because you'll get lots of these off, whereas it's quite slow in PvP. And again, this is a gene that you could change to another fire utility option uh, that uh, might give you a little bit more bang for your buck. Or maybe even a non-fire and drop that 5% fire damage, which might well be worth it. I do kind of want to make a PvP version of this. Following that then, we get to Salt in the Wound, which is one of the main engines of this setup. A huge, see, 20% from testing damage up on an enemy with a negative status. So burn, so blast blight. That's a big amount of damage, and you can see why you would want it. It really is key here. And then the jewel in the crown, the piece de resistance, right in the center of this gorgeous grid, is Valiant Flare from Pink Rathian. This is awesome. So not only does this give you more fire attack and defense for five turns, which is lovely to have, but you also get charged power for two turns. And if you don't know what that is, it's like when Rajang does his power up to make his next attack absolutely ridiculous. You get it for two turns, and that means for two turns after you use this, you are going to hit like a nuclear bomb. And that is what you want. Valiant Flare into either Savage Fireball winning a head-to-head, -head, or a Teostra Supernova to just decimate the opposition. Yeah, that is fantastic and it works absolute wonders. And therein lies the playstyle of this. You want to bust out your fiery aura to begin with. It's cheap, only five kinship. You can command him on turn one if he doesn't use it himself. Then you want to build a little bit. Then you want to get your burn applied or your blast blight applied when one of those has happened. Then you valiant flare and then you absolutely just go to town with savage fireballs and or your supernova as the enemy wilts away. Another thing that's fantastic fantastic here is while actually riding the Bracky, I mean the damage is ridiculous. Ridiculous. You end up hitting for like a thousand plus every single time you bust out a head-to-head. -head. It's just 
Oh, it feels good. Like, that's the whole shtick here. Just to make a Bracky or Firepower Monstie do the absolute most reliably powerful threatening damage possible while still having some kind of roundedness to the setup. And this achieves it and then some. I am so impressed with the results here because honestly, I really didn't expect it to be just this effective. Like, I, I, like, let, let me, like, like 2,200 damage to win a head-to-head. -head. Like, is that not the most amazing thing you've ever seen? I absolutely adore it! Oh! So, that's about all I can say on this. There's not much to go over. It's just a fantastic set of genes to do a fantastic amount of damage reliably and frequently every single turn with your Power Fire Monsties. And in case you're wondering why no status inflict rate up, well, it just doesn't need it. Most of the moves have a good 60% chance to actually put on the burn. On top of the Blast Blight, you will just find yourself getting the status very easily, very frequently, and you just don't need to waste a precious gene slot on that inflict rate up. It's very, very good. Burn and Blast Blight are honestly one of the easiest statuses to apply full stop in the game. Let me know what you guys think of this as the first build. Let me know if you'd like to see something specific next, and if there's anything you'd like to see from a build that I have not exactly covered here. I suppose in terms of your hunter, there's nothing you really need to do to support this. Obviously, you can have salt in the wounds yourself on a Charmer and Armor set to do more damage from the burn and blast blight your monster will set up. You can have more kinship generation yourself to command more savage fireballs, but other than that, you're pretty much good. Now, you could, of course, weave in a speed attack or a technical attack, lose one of the bingos, maybe replace that slime gene, maybe replace uh, the flame burst from the Azure Rathalos to give more variety if you want to just have him out permanently or for PvP. That's entirely possible, but as I said, this was a focused cannon, but certainly not a glass one. Alright everybody, like if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more. I will see you very soon. Please consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again, a good boy. <laughs>